Hi everyone, welcome in. This is Marlene with The Room to Bloom. Thanks for joining me today. So I opened up a book that I haven't opened in a while and I actually just re realized that this book is also by Sarah Young. Um, it's called Take My Heart, Oh God. It's riches from the greatest Christian women writers of all time. I opened it up randomly to a page and this is what it came to. So July 1st. So that may have a special meaning to you. Um, and this is what, first there's a quote on the top and I'll read that. It says, God lovingly came to me in my heap of despair and disaster and seemed to kiss the elbows and knees that I had scraped in the fall. That was written by Beth Moore. It says, he comes to you. In a world filled with violence and disasters, illness and disappointments, there is no shortage of hurt, pain and tears. They're all around driving you deeper into hopelessness. Blinding, blinded by your troubles, you stumble into the pits of despair. Lying there bleeding and wounded, you wonder, where is my hope? But God shines down a light in hope of his son, Jesus. Jesus' outstretched hand reaches to you. Gratefully, you place your hand in his. Lovingly, Jesus lifts you out of the pit and stands you up. He cleans your wound and he kisses them. In Jesus, your hope is renewed. God doesn't want you to leave his beloved children in disaster or despair. He came to give them fullness of joy. So he lovingly comes to you. No matter what difficult situation you are in, that's where he does his best work. That's the, the reading that you can go to for that is Psalm 18, 28. And then it says, Lord, shine the light of Christ upon me that my darkness and despair may be gone. Um, I was just really moved when I read that and I wanted to share it. Um, and, you know, I, I just think there's a, a great wealth of trust in that um, when we do fall to hope and despair, even if you have never spent a day in your life praying, you have had no religion, no spirituality, nothing, but everything starts falling apart. And what do you do? You turn to God. That's what people do. Um, and this is kind of what this is saying. And then so out comes this outstretched hand reaches to you. And even though you may not potentially see that, um, you will definitely start to sense that as things start unfolding to lift you, right? To pull you back up. It gratefully places, uh, Jesus outstretched hand reaches to you gratefully. You place your hand in his lovingly. Jesus lifts you out of the pit and stands you up. So you can feel that you are being helped. You, you come to a deep, realization and recognition that there is much more than our, our physical world, right? Um, and you can feel, literally, you can feel the love. It says he cleans your wounds and he kisses them. In Jesus, your hope is renewed. So when things have gotten broken down and then you start to see, to know, to sense, to fully recognize to tap into your hope becomes renewed so I hope that for anyone who might be struggling with anything that this, these are encouraging words for you um, and I'm just going to go ahead and move on into the cards then based on this reading and see um, what might follow up with this that would be helpful for the collective cards that I'm going to start with. They're called Earth Magic. These are by uh, Stephen Farmer. Oops. Oh, and um, I wanted to share this too because this is definitely a message. I had this book on this back table. Wasn't even near it. Um, I mean, I was three feet away from it, but later I looked over and the book was on the floor and I didn't even hear it fall. Um, so I have like experiences like that, right? 
Um, like they say, if something falls down and it's open to a page, you were, this is supposed to happen. This isn't like a coincidence. There's a message in here. So I wanted to share this because I think it might be helpful for someone today. It says, make some noise. This is the page it was open to. Make some noise, and there is a cricket on here. So right now, what are you going through right now that you have been staying silent about, that you have been holding in? Um, interesting, today I, ha I personally had an emotional day, and it wasn't tied to the moon phases. Um, so, and nothing happened. So again, just, you know, where I live, I definitely could have been picking up other people's stuff, right? Um, and this may be a message for the other people that are close here. Make some noise um, with a cricket. And what does a cricket do, right? If a cricket, say, were to get into your home, they're really loud, right? They can be really loud and they hide. Um, so maybe it is time to get really loud about something, especially um, to a point that, you know, say others are sleeping, right? Well, here I am, right? And my, my work is to help awaken people to God, that the divine is right here, a loving presence source that lives within us, around us, through us, right? And we live <laughs> in source, so it's pretty cool. But, um, so imagine that. When does a cricket often time, I mean, we, of course, if we're, depending upon where we live in the season, we might hear crickets outside. But if one is to get into the home, especially in the evening, they might, might start chirping away depending upon the time of the evening. And they might wake you up. So this might be even like my message to um, make some noise so that I am helping others to awaken, right? Maybe that is it, act like a cricket. <clears throat> but I'm putting that out for you too because maybe it's time that we all make some noise about what is going on um, in our life, in our experience, what's going on around us, what's going on in our community, what's going on in our city, near our homes, what's going on in our families, what's going on in society, in our world, what's going on with our earth, our relationships. All right, what message do you have here for the collective? What would you like to show us? Whoop. Okay, well, this fell out. I'm going to take it. <clears throat> it says solitude. Okay? So sometimes if, if we're getting that message that says make some noise. Um, so I'm getting a disagreement about that right now. <clears throat> and it's, I mean, you, you might know where it's time to start speaking up about something, right? That you're experiencing, going through, whatever that is. But you may have been sitting in solitude for a very, for some time, right? And now you see this tree on this, on this mountain? See that blooming? Now it's time to bloom. But maybe before you're making a lot of noise, you wanna make sure how you're gonna go about this, right? So you might wanna take some time in solitude to tune in deeper, to connect more, to hear the messages that you're supposed to hear. All right, what else would you like to show us here? I have the wolf. Trust your instincts. Okay? What are your instincts telling you right now that you may need to be making some noise about? You may have an instinct to stay in solitude, right? But let's go a little further. Let's see what else comes out here. Unfoldment, yeah. This is the lotus flower. Okay. 
So things will unfold as they are meant to. So the lotus flower every day goes, it comes up in the morning and it, it grows up through the water, through the mud actually, it goes underneath this mucky water. And every morning it comes back up and it raises up towards the light and it blooms and it opens up, right? And it kind of uh, it kind of looks like it lands on this lily pad, right? But each evening it folds back in, right? Folds back into itself and then it resets, right? So this is kind of like the, the sun and the moon, right? In a way, like if you're thinking about that. But the unfoldment is a process in which we trust. So there is something that me, we may want to do and or experience or whatever, and that might be out there, right, in the future. But the future isn't here yet. But it doesn't mean that we can't, oh, maybe schedule something for the future, but it's not about getting hung up on how it will unfold, right? It is the unfoldment that is the gift. So it's kind of like if you had a little piece of paper and it's like, okay, in this moment I am you know, say that's something that's three weeks out. In this moment, I'm doing this. And that this might, each moment it's unfolding again. Each moment I'm doing this and each moment I'm here. So it's about, if you recognize that your mind is worried about whatever's going on out there in the future, can you pull yourself back to be present and allow each moment to unfold as it unfolds and continue if you have anything that you are feeling unsafe about, that you have a fear about, like, because especially in this reading, like it was talking about despair and destruction, um, violence, disasters, illness, disappointments, right? So, you know, th these are not words that I personally, like generally walk into any of my readings with, but there was something about that that stuck to me. And I already see literally how this is unfolding. You see what I mean? Um, the messages start going together and a bigger story is being created here. So let's see what else. Um, um, comes up. The other thing I'm thinking about is as the unfoldment is taking place, continue to trust your instincts, right? So let's say that someone said to you, okay, there's a thing in three weeks, right? And it's in this city. And that is literally all you knew. And you couldn't get a hold of anyone. But the city wasn't that big, let's just say. So you're like, okay, I'm going to kind of figure this out. And I'm going to learn to trust my instincts. I'm going to start asking my angels and guides for questions to see if they can help me tap in to my inner wisdom. Especially when I take time in solitude so that I can hear them and see if they can help me arrive at that destination, the right place, right? Can I trust my instincts? Tap in. All right, what else would you like to show us here? Okay, I have the tree. So right now, um, there is a need to get grounded, okay? So if you look at that tree, see it's got the roots, the stem would be like our body, this would be representative of the earth, right? And then the sky. Um, when we are feeling anxious, um, when we are very much tapping into our spiritual spirituality or like fifth dimension, so we're getting, you know, tapping into like higher knowledge and such, um, we can really very much be, we all exist in the multiverse. It's just that we don't always know that we do. But when we become aware of it, there's a lot going on, right? We become aware of all of the stuff that's going on. And so it can feel like you are on the, you know, the uh, super highway, right? <laughs> and it's like, whoa, you know, so getting grounded, taking time to get grounded um, so that you don't feel like a kite that is in heavy winds. It's, you know, flying a kite on a nice day is nice, especially if you're the kite and you're just whatever, right? But if the winds are really crazy, um, it can feel very challenging. So in order to get that to feel like you're more in balance with it, it's about getting grounded or you hear the word anchored, right? 
So kind of imagining that you have a root system that's going through your body into the center of the earth. So you can kind of practice something like that with meditation. You can spend time outdoors in nature, walking on grass. I know it's this time of year at the moment. Right now it's February. May not be the most conducive depending upon where you live, right? Um, but listening to sounds of nature can be grounding. There's a number of different um, ways that you can get grounded. If you are feeling anxious, um, getting away from electronics will help you to get grounded, right? Just um, coloring, like just doing something that is very, very soothing that pulls all this fray back to yourself, okay? So we had one fall out. This is the river and this speaks of movement, okay? And so what this is really speaking about is trusting the flow of life, not pushing so hard against the current, trusting the flow of how it goes. So like in the example that something is three weeks out there and, and um, let's say you didn't know where it was and you couldn't get a hold of anyone and you were fighting and fighting and fighting to find out where this event was, right? Well, that's kind of not going with the flow. But when you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna like see if I can trust my instinct instinct to bring me to the right place and I'm going to see how this unfolds in the day and see what happens right okay so let's go to the next thing I'm going to use the magical Nordic tarot for um, the rest of this so this is interesting I just had the page of cups jump out um, and that jumped out for a reason of course right so we're going to take it so the Page of Cups is absolutely about playfulness. Um, making sure because, oh, the candle just went out. It was just at the tail end. I wanna start a new one, one moment. Hmm, hmm, this one's pretty. But anyway, um, making sure through all of this stuff that we remember to play so that our vibration stays high, that we continue to tap in. Um, I just learned something interesting about candles tonight. Um, I have never been a big candle burner until I've been, you know, just, just doing this. I like to have um, preferably a white candle once in a while. I, um, you know, don't have one or didn't get one quite yet. so. Um, but anyway, something about the candle, just to quickly interrupt this reading with a quick message, right? If you let a candle burn all the way to the very edge of the container the first time, um, then it will always burn smoothly. But if you blow it out before the wax melts all the way to the edge, then you'll continue to have, it's called candle memory. Interesting. So, um, we'll see how this goes. Anyway, all right, so we have the Page of Cups. Be playful. This is the encouragement of being playful. The page often comes with an offer of love, um, I'm sorry, a message about love. They are a younger energy, so reminding you to still play and have fun. The Cups is about emotion. Um, you can still be in solitude and play. So, you, you know, you can um, literally go outside, do things that you would have done as a kid, you know, um, whatever that looks like for you, right? Just remember to have fun along this journey so that you don't get lost in your thoughts because that is very easy to do. All right, what else would you like to show us here? Yeah, the Eight of Swords. So the Eight of Swords is like a self-imposed uh, self prison that one puts themselves in. And so they feel restricted. That is the word that comes up with this. Um, and it's under, it falls under the wolf and the instinct. So no one's doing that to you, right? And when I, you know, I've been on this journey, at first it was like, what is all the stuff I'm experiencing, right? But I finally came to this point, it was like, 
No one's saying I can't do this or I can't go here. I can't do this or that, right? And um, and yet I was having so many experiences. It's like I was getting all these messages, but it's it was self-imposed, right? Okay, what else would you like to show us here? Okay, the Two of Cups, yeah. So this speaks of union, of a relationship of t some type. Oftentimes it is a romantic relationship, but definitely you can start out in as a business relationship or could be a business relationship. But because there is emotion involved, there is an unfoldment that might be happening with a union of some sort. Hmm. Um, by the way, that page of cups, the playfulness, so this is really kind of encouraging you. Yes, it is okay to be in solitude, but play even when you're in solitude. Um, okay, the next one that I have is the king of pentacles, right? And this is um, generally somebody who is a mentor, um, who's worked hard, earned their income, they're, they're, are they're financially steady, um, or, you know, they have their earthly possessions met, they actually would be very grounded, right? Because um, that would be the one who would be the groundest, grounded, most grounded besides the emperor is the king of pentacles because um, the pentacles represent the earth and getting grounded. So there's a king of, king of pentacles that might help you come into your life to help you get grounded. All right, so let's just continue to see what's going on here. Okay, the, the hierophant is, um, this is speaking of movement, going with the flow, but it also speaks about knowledge, like a, a higher knowledge, spiritual wisdom, right, knowledge. And um, the hierophant can, it is also the Taurus energy, which is also an earthly um, energy. Um, So trusting the movement and the unfolding of the knowledge that you are given. And also remember, you're given this knowledge to not just hold it on, hold on to it for yourself. You're given it to share with the collective. All right, what, what else would you like to show us here? as a spiritual teacher and guide, right? So keep moving in, in that direction of sharing your knowledge. Okay, I have the magi magician that there is a mastery and mastery comes when you are in solitude because you don't have so much noise and chaos around you. You can get your thoughts organized. You can think clearly. You can tune into spirit because you you start recognizing, like say you had a lot of people going in and out of the house, right? And something in your house was moving around, right? You just think it was somebody else. You wouldn't really think that much about it. But if you were to live alone and you had something moving around your house, um, like say you set your keys down every day by one thing and every day you went to go find them, they weren't there, but they would always be over summer, you know, just say by, by your jewelry stand or whatever that, <laughs> whatever, right? And you're like, that is so weird. I don't remember putting these here and say that happens like three days in a row and you're like, okay, this is tripping me out, right? So that's how you feel. But spirit will mess with you in a way because they're trying to get your attention, one, to show you that they are around, right? Two, they'll show you, like, so let's say you lost something else. Well, then one day you go to pick up the keys, they go flying, and they land on the floor. Well, you had lost your ring, but you couldn't find it. Guess where the keys land? Right next to the ring, right? And... You are asking for help to find the ring. So this is how things can unfold. And so it's about opening up to 
that understanding that you have spirits, angels, guides all around you, and that amazing things can happen when you slow your life down enough and you actually become present where you are, you can, you know, you can, everyone's given different gifts, right? But hear, see, sight, smell, right? So you, turn, you tap into different things. Um, so very interesting. <laughs> but being in solitude will help you to do that. But the playfulness part about that is because when you play, it raises your vibration. So angels guide spirit. They're, they're vibrating very high. And they can lower their vibration some right? They're going to lower, they'll lower it some to meet you, but you've got to work to raise yours so that you can connect. Then you, then you're tuning in, right? So it's really quite amazing and beautiful. All right. What else would you like to show us here? <clears throat> Clarify the page of cups, please. <clears throat> Charity, generosity, and this is really interesting because this is an extra card in the tarot deck, in this deck, and the number is 22. So I kind of want to read it to you. Um, it's something here about a blue cat, which is really rare. Um, let's read this one because this is not a card that is normally in the tarot deck, number 22. It says... Designed by the world-renowned artist Tracy Ehrman, the Clarity card, oh, I'm sorry, Charity card, depicts the image of one of the most sacred animals in Nordic mythology, a blue cat, synonymous with the goddess of love and beauty, Freya, who's thought to have traveled in a chariot pulled by the cat's pulled by, the, by cats. Felines were highly prized by ancient Nordic people who believed the cats had been given to Freya as a gift from Thor. She loved them so much that they soon became her favorite companions, leading to them becoming a Nordic symbol of giving and kindness. So the key word here is giving and kindness, compassion and independence, right? So, you know, a cat is independent, right? So we've got, it falls under the word solitude. It, this is also um, indicative of like the six of uh, pentacles cards. What you give, you will receive. So charity is a card of compassion and self-care. Like a cat, well known for its independence, this card encourages you to <laughs> encourages you to rely on yourself rather than others for the love and nurturing you seek. Acts of kindness, both to yourself and to others, are essential now. Gifts and thoughtful gestures from others are equally likely. Your intuition may be heightened, and your desire to paint or write may be strengthened, too. Days spent alone will recharge your energy. This card can also signify the need to spend time with animals. So I, it's so interesting. I'm just, I, I'm getting that message too. So, you know, here I am, I'm doing the reading, but it, you know, this message is for me as well as it is for you, right? Okay, so what else would you like to show us? Can you please clarify the Eight of Swords? <clears throat> You know, I just realized that, um, what happened here? I had, okay, so I had mastery, <laughs> or the magician under the playfulness. Something happened because that card came out wrong. And then the charity card comes under the restriction and instinct. So follow your instinct with generosity, which will help you get out of the self-imposed prism, okay? What else would you like to show us here? Two of Cups, yeah. So the Two of Cups brings happiness. Some type of a union is happening, coming forth. There is an unfoldment of a union. It brings happiness with the Sun card here, all right? Lovely, one of the happiest cards in the deck, so that feels great. All right, can you please clarify the King of Pentacles?
Three of Swords. Okay. So affairs of the heart. So there could have been something that has happened even with this King of Pentacles who may have been in a third party situation, right? Um, could be doing some healing work and would be helpful for even him to continue to work on being grounded, right? Let's see what else you'd like to show us. It's important to stay grounded, especially in affairs of the heart, because your mind can kind of get away from you, right? If you're having um, things going on. All right, the next one for clarifying the Hierophant, which is knowledge, is about the Eight of Pentacles. There are opportunities that are coming up uh, for you then, would, which would be in the area of um, spiritual spirituality working you know helping others in that area and trusting where it takes you right trusting the flow of how that unfolds for you the unfoldment right oh whew, we don't want to start it on fire <laughs> i stuck it in the candle okay um oh i was i'm sorry i was gonna just take one more card here for the outcome, what would you like to show us? Okay, yeah, Four of Wands, happy occasion, right? This is generally the Twin Flame card in the deck. So this can represent, um, it's just a happy occasion. It can represent marriage celebrations, that type of thing. On the deck, the Ten of Swords. So there has been a, uh, this is not the world card where it says a cycle has been completed. The Ten of Swords often shows like where somebody's been stabbed in the back. It's like literally the end of um, something. It says completion here, right? So now things, you got stabbed in the back in some form or manner, right? So you've moved into solitude, but it's important to have some fun and master your gifts that you are giving, get receiving, understanding, and tuning into. It's time to master them. Trust your instincts. You don't have to stay in this Eight of Swords or um, the restrictive energy, but you may be feeling that. And the way that it will help you get out of that is by focusing on service, generosity, right? When you take the pain off of yourself and you shift helping another because it actually ends up healing you as well, right? And so it's a win-win-win all the way around. Um, Trust the unfoldment of how this will work for you. And it actually might be through the charity work that you meet your two of cups person, right? And that happiness then comes in for you. Um, it's important, like I said, to stay grounded. This person actually could be a, a king of pentacles, but do be, be, be aware of a third party situation, right? Um, and like I said, maybe this King of Pentacles has been in that and has been doing some heart healing, right? So just being aware of that um, and allowing for that to unfold however it will. Trusting the movement of your journey, however that's moving for you, uh, staying into your Hierophant energy, uh, spirituality, and working, working in that field and there are opportunities that are coming your way with the Eight of Pentacles. And in the end, it looks like there is a happy occasion to celebrate, right? So that's really beautiful and lovely. Um, so I think with this, let's just wrap this one up. I want to say thank you for joining me. I hope you have an amazing day. Take care.